So, Kim, I've been doing. Uh, here, you hold this for me. I've been doing. Uh, Kim, try a little, put some effort into it. What please. am I doing? You're filming me in the car and stuff. Oh. I've been making video clips to cut a video out of it's a review of the 2014 Mini Cooper four door stick shift. Because I suspect that'll get a lot of views, actually. Kim, you're doing a shit poor job. No, I'm showing the stick shift. Oh, okay, I see. I thought you were just sort of laying it dangle there. So, uh, what are your thoughts about it as a car? Me? Yeah, like you're going to review this car, things you like, things you don't like, things um, that you think they could have done differently, or things that you think they did well. No, I'm really happy with the car. I, I do have to honestly say, now wish that I would have gotten the gray one. <laughs> okay. So as far as everything else goes. Is it because this gets dirty too fast? Why? Yeah. Well, no. Not because it gets dirty, but I think I just like the looks of the gray ones a little bit more when I see them on the road. But other than that, I mean, that's like that's such a stupid thing, you know, to not be happy with. Other than that, it is a little bit difficult learning after all of these years to pay more attention to the functions of driving inside the car. You get very used to being in an automatic and having your hands free at all times where this forces you to be pay more attention. It does. Um, what is your feeling about how this stick operates compared to other sticks? Do you think that this is a bit of a more challenging stick to get the hang of? Mm, I think it's all relative. I think each car just has its own little personality. and. Well, that's true, but I've driven a lot of sticks before, and this one has got a steeper running curve than most, I'd say. It's got a short first, it's got a long second, it's got a long third. And then, when do you ever, have you ever gone up to six gear even? No. Alright, I mean, I have once when I was trying to. I've barely last, I've barely left Arrow Highway. Okay. Um, do you think, what do you think about the, the roominess? Is it too small for you? Nope. It's pretty damn roomy, right? Yeah, I don't experience that nausea that I get in low like low driving cars hmm. I'd say that one of the areas where there's a bit of side price is the trunk space not a lot of trunk space but yeah, not, yeah I mean but we have the FJ for that I knew what I was getting into with the small trunk space right um now we did not get the moon roof or anything do you, do you wish we had gotten a moon roof yeah what do you think about fact that uh, in my dad's car, he's got the moonroof covered up because it gets too hot in there. But that's an old, old one. That's like... 2008. 2008. What, Not do I, what do I think about it? What do you mean? Like, does that make you think maybe the moonroof's not a good idea? No. You're talking about David Strauss. Well, I mean, but he, he's blocked it because it, it's too hot. He's David Strauss. He could have gotten one that closes. He has one that closes. It's not like it's wide open to the sky. Well, what I'm saying is, is why does he if, he, if it closes, why is he using a piece of material to c cover it? Because it's not dark enough. What I'm saying is, is they have ones that go Oh, well, that kind, yeah. But he pro probably didn't have that in 2008. They probably did in 2018. Probably. But this, this is specifically a review of the 2014 Mini Cooper Countryman four-door stick shift. Okay, um, well, even in 2014, you probably had that too, but just because your dad didn't like it doesn't mean we wouldn't. Well, yeah, if it was retractable like that, then it'd be fine. Do you ever use the sport function? No. In driving? No. As I said, I never left Arrow Highway. Have you tried it? No. You should. It feels different. You know, it feels a lot different without the quest thing. It feels more like a regular stick shift. That's probably the main difference in sticks. Um, one thing I like about it, there are no blind spots. You can see really well every direction. And the FJ's got a kind of blind spots, cynical spots, so... Uh, it's not boat-like at all. Let's take a jump shot to the outside and discuss things you like about the outside or not like about the outside. I know it's a little dirty right now. Parking Why right are you here. parking it way in here if you're going to do shots of the outside? Well, because, okay, fine. I just thought that it would be better to park here so we get all three cars in and the oil is here. 
but let's put it here instead. All right, so let's get some shots of at least the driver's side. How about no shots of camera? No shots of camera. So this key, you you know, it's got it's one of these new kind of keys. So you put it in here like this, and it sticks in there, and then you push it to make it come out. All right, so I love the seats here. These are great because this is tall enough for my back of my head, and much car, most cars are not. That thing's not tall enough for me because I'm six foot four. You see, it's got a roomy back seat. Well, you will see in a second. Well, roomy enough, I guess. Got this little black cover thing for the trunk so that people looking in the back can't see what's in your trunk. Kim got these windows. We got the windows tinted for Kim. And they're not naturally this dark. Um I think. You know. It obviously, he's got the basic amenities that cars have nowadays. Power windows. Power door locks. But it doesn't have an automatically opening trunk. You have to lift it manually. Or this one, this model anyway. And if you want to look into the... Under the hood. <coughs> let's see what we got here. Let's always find this again when I'm... I haven't seen it in a while. Where's the hood latch pop thing? I've only gone into the under the hood once or twice in this car. Once to add oil. And once when I was gonna change the spark plug to make the three cylinder problem go away, but then it ended up the dealership said they do it for free, so uh popping the trunk. I mean the hood. How does one pop the hood? Where is the hood pop? Sometimes they're in here. Oh, Jesus. Is this it? Yeah, okay, it's this thing right here. How to pop the hood. Of a mini. Right here is the door. Okay. okay, so this is the engine. Um If you take this off and this off, then you can get into the where the spark plugs are and pull the spark plugs out. But you have to have a spark plug socket wrench to pull them out. And you've got to have uh, a long socket wrench too because it goes way down in there. This is obviously where you put the oil in and this is coolant. This is for your windshield wiper fluid. And I guess it's a four cylinder. I would imagine. Let's see what this says. Uh, let's see. It's made by BMW, which is why it's kind of an expensive car. Now, we, we didn't buy a new one, obviously. Uh. But, you know, these things cost a lot um, if you get them new. Do you think they still put the tag you're telling, showing them? Yeah, I'm talking about the engine and stuff. This is the dipstick. You check your oil levels. And, I don't know, I guess it's about all there is to say about the engine. It's a small engine, obviously. 
small car. But it's a nice car. It's got vehicle emission control information. Okay, Brad, what do you think about the car? I like it. I like it too. I don't know if this was the maximal value you could get for the money we spent on it, but I'm just saying, I'm saying that this brand of car may not be, I didn't say how much money we spent on it. I said, I don't know if this is the maximal value you can get for the money we spent. Kim likes it a lot, so that maximizes the value right there. Kim wanted a kind of a quirky car or a car that was not really boring or something. So she chose this kind and <coughs> basically we got the most recent year we could afford. We didn't finance it. So we just had to pay but that's what it looks like right there. There's the FJ. Here's my old Scion that I don't drive anymore. Um, yeah, that's about it. I recommend it. It's a really, it's a very drivable car. And I recommend the stick as well. It's like, uh, once you get used to it, or if you're on sport mode, it's, it's really tight. It's like driving a little race car or something. And as an added note, I'll just mention that my father actually raced the old school Mini Coopers back in the 60s in Europe. He was a race car driver, and this was the kind of car he raced. So, it's kind of a little family connection for you. Alright, thanks for watching. Hope this review was enjoyed by people seeking a review of the Mini Cooper 2014 Countryman Kick Shift.